Okay, so again, uh, go, good evening to everyone. Welcome to our Nursing Pharmacology NCM 106 on the concepts and principles. As we start, uh, as we start our, our session, so again, as we always practice, uh, we will uh, state and address our prayer because uh, for now, as what I have inculcated into your mind, to have already the RN uh, mindset. So with the prayer that we have, Okay, so our almighty creator, we praise and glorify your name. We humbly submit ourselves on your vital intention to claim the central Lino RN. Help us attain the optimum health and at all times with perseverance in leading uh, to our RN goals. Nurture us with your spirit to keep our open mind to absorb and retain the lecture on skills and skills concepts according to the nurse licensure examination framework. Let us decide to complete our every examinations according to your will with prudence and integrity. We appreciate you on our existence to contribute in Central Dino 100% to teamwork. As we leave ourselves to you on our journey with the core objectives of the MCO College of Nursing. Amen. Let the spirit with uh, our students here in uh, our BSN 22, let their spirit uh, have uh, a high uh, intensity for you to, to absorb all the learning that we intend for this uh, session and lord uh, guide them with their health to sustain their optimum stamina to learn all of these concepts that is very essential to for them to become future professionals amen so uh i know that we had our self-assessment exercise before so uh for, for us to, to best define pharmacology, I don't know if I have already introduced this during the time that we had our discussion, but I think as, as, part, of our, as part of our evaluation and if you have absorbed the, the learnings on concepts related to the pharmacology, I am inviting everyone to join at slido.com with the uh, code of the hashtag 2224289. So the question is, what best define pharmacology in one word? So we have explored its concept. We have done the self-assessment exercise. Can you indicate the one word? So the code is there. <laughs> you have, so probably the code was entered, <laughs> was entered in our uh, session. But anyway, I know uh, you want to share the code. But anyway, so we have medication. We have most of you answered science. I know uh, if you still remember the definition of the pharmacology, so science, medicine, medication, drugs, so therapeutic, then we have computation, wow. So because of the calculations of dosages, we have computation of medication, wellness, effect, uh, any other terms or word? The ADME, yes, the mnemonic, our mnemonic of ADME. So medicine, so we have the effect, therapeutic, any other words that can be associated with pharmacology? So we have, uh, you really, you, you still uh, remember the, the, the principle of science uh, when, when he, we have already inculcated this uh, as part of the definition of the pharmacology. So we have Tmax and the Cmax, yeah. So I know probably if, if I remember the Tmax and the Cmax was uh, introduced during the time that uh, we have, or during the time that I have introduced about the, the relationship between the the time and the concentration. So uh, I think the 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 Tmax and the Cmax uh, have been introduced, or for some who have already advanced. Uh, advanced uh, when it comes to the watching of the supplemental videos. So chemical agent, okay, because uh, it's composed of chemical, okay. Response, okay, because uh, if we have the drugs, the, the body will definitely respond. Biological effect, because we are considering uh, that uh, any drug that enters the body may have an effect in the cells because we are talking about in the biology about life and cells are part of it. So we have pharmacokinetics. So what considered here as the most answered term in the cloud is the science 
and it was already indicated the science of drugs. Because if we consider the science, it considers the processes and the principles uh, where it involved uh, basically the, the absorption, the distribution, the metabolism, and excretion, and how it will reach to its desired effect. So thank you very much for your participation. I, I really appreciated that these terms have been uh, remembered in the uh, presentation of the concepts and principles of pharmacology. So let us now proceed. With the presentation of the pharmacokinetics, uh, I will introduce to you the audiovisual presentation on how the pharmacokinetics uh, are, are processed in the body. And if we say pharmacokinetics from terms of pharmaco, so it's associated with the drug and the kinetics, we are referring to the letter M, which is the movement. So let's have some uh, introduction about the pharmacokinetics as I play the audiovisual presentation. Let's start. Hi, this tutorial is the first in the pharmacokinetics series. So first of all, I should talk about what pharmacokinetics is. Within pharmacology, we often talk about two distinct, but unfortunately unintuitively named branches. These are pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics. Briefly, pharmacodynamics is the study of the effects of drugs on the body. That is, what does this drug do to the body? What receptors does it activate? And what other effects does it have? Alternatively, pharmacokinetics is the study of the effect the body has on drugs. In pharmacokinetics, we ask questions like, how does the drug get into the body and where does it go? What does the body do to the drug? And how does the body get rid of the drug? It is this branch of pharmacology that we will be looking at in this series. So let's begin with a pharmacokinetics acronym you'll find in every textbook of pharmacology, ADME, A-D-M-E. This stands for absorption, which is how the drug gets into the body, distribution, which is where the drug goes to in the body. Metabolism, which is how the body chemically modifies the drug. And finally, excretion, which is how the body gets rid of the drug. So as based from the, what you've heard in the presentation, it's whenever the drug enters the body, then that already starts the what we call absorption. And once the drug reach the, the plasma, that's the start wherein uh, it already passed through the, the mechanism wherein may depend on the route of administration. And once it reached the plasma, the plasma that's referring to the blood, and this usually the component of the blood that carries the, the drug and other nutrients of the body and other components that is essential for distribution is the plasma. So when it enters the distribution, it will be distributed to the different compartments of the body. And when it comes to this distribution, as the, the, the cell or the plasma cell carries this uh, chemical composition of the drug, it will basically metabolize. If we talk about metabolism, this is the time wherein this is for applicable for oral medication, that once it entered the, the body from the gastrointestinal tract to, to basically prevent uh, some uh, harmful components of the drug that is not useful for the body or the excess composition of the drug, it will be metabolized through the what we call liver. And these uh, components that may not be useful and that may take risk the body to have the toxic effect, it will be removed out of the body through the process of excretion. And what organ will represent the excretory uh, function? That is basically the kidneys. So let us continue. These are four elements we need to consider when talking about the pharmacokinetics of a certain drug. The following tutorials will each talk about a certain aspect of pharmacokinetics. But for the remainder of this tutorial, we are going to discuss some of the more boring but incredibly important aspects boring. of pharmacokinetics <laughs> and pharmacology. So I'll begin by drawing a graph. 
And here on the y-axis, we have the concentration of drug within the body. And on the x-axis, we have time. So if we give a person a drug at time zero, then we will see the concentration of the drug go up, and then it will fall slowly as the drug is removed from the body. And that's what we see on this graph. Okay, if I have already introduced this before, so this is just a recall. So the line graph itself represents the, the X and the Y axis. So the X axis represents the concentration of the drug and the Y axis represents the time. So at the, the concentration zero and the time zero, it is once the drug enter the body and, and uh, it will reach the plasma. That's the time that the drug is being processed in the body. And once it's reached the peak, concentration level, which is the what we call maximum concentration, the Cmax, that's the time that the drug already reaches the plasma. And as what I've told you, once it reaches the plasma, it is time for the distribution. And once it will, will be considered the distribution process, this will consider basically the metabolism wherein the liver will process its function to remove the excess composition. So that's why when it reached the maximum maximum uh, concentration of the drug, the, the slope and the graph goes down because that's the time that the concentration of the drug becomes uh, lowered because the other could be subject for the removal out of the body. So until it goes again to this time that the composition of the drug have been removed out of the body through the process of excretion. So once it reaches the the peak concentration level, that's the time that it reaches already from the term itself concentration, it reaches already the plasma. So let us continue. So looking at this graph, we can see that in this section, the drug enters the body faster than it is being removed from it. Therefore, the concentration of the drug in the body increases. Then, after the peak of this graph, the drug is being removed from the body faster than it is entering. So the concentration of the drug in the body starts decreasing. This point at the top of the graph is important because it is the highest concentration of drug in the body. Therefore, we call this the maximum concentration, or Cmax. This is important because knowing the maximum concentration can help predict the therapeutic benefit and also the likelihood of side effects. The time at which the maximum concentration occurs is called T max. Now, later on, you will appreciate that every time, every time that the the drug already reaches the plasma, that's the time that the 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 faster that the drug reaches its concentration level. For example, if a drug will be given to will be given through oral it will still pass through the stomach before it will be absorbed by the intestinal tract and proceed to the plasma unlike for the drug that will be given intravenously from the term itself intravenous the drug will be directed uh, through the blood in the venous blood vessel then since it will directly reach the plasma it will have a shorter period of time to reach the peak concentration level. Unlike for the oral medication, it will reach a longer period of time before it reach the peak concentration level or the Cmax and the Tmax because it will still undergo the breakdown from the, the stomach, intestinal tract. It will be metabolized by the liver until uh, it reach the plasma concentration. So let's continue. Slightly more confusing concept is the half-life of a drug. The half-life is, by definition, the time it takes to remove half of the current concentration of drug from the body. So let's consider the half-life on this graph. If we begin at T max, we want to see how much time it takes for the concentration of the drug to decrease from C max to half of C max. So here is the half C max line here. And therefore, the half-life, which is often denoted T half, is the time between T max and where I've drawn T half here. Okay, so since, uh, sorry. since we have mentioned 
since we have mentioned about the, the Tmax, I'm sorry, we have mentioned about the Cmax and the Tmax, we have all, also considered the perspective of what the half light is. And when it comes to the half light, so I will just, I'll just let the, the presentation go back to, okay, for a while. I'll just share it again. Okay. So, yeah. So I need to close the program. Okay. I'll just start again the presentation because I'm having difficulty with the opening of the. Uh... Okay. I'll start again. So as as we go with the as we proceed with the discussion, we're talking about the concentration, the peak concentration level, and we're talking about the maximum time. So this is uh, very important for us to know because this will this is definitely associated on the proper time or the consideration of the right time that we are considering because if for example you are not giving the drug on the right time this will really affect the half life or the concentration of the drug and at the same time it will it will affect the half life of the drug it will affect the efficacy or the potency of the drug wherein it will not reach its desired effect so again i'll just have this shared again. Okay, so I'll just go back to my presentation. Okay, uh, I'm sorry. So we are going to the video. Okay, so as we consider, let us continue with uh, the Tmax and the Cmax, okay. As we consider the, the, the half-life of the drug, we have to take into account what's happening. Uh, just for a while, I'm, I'm having difficulty with my presentation. I'll just stop sharing again. So sorry for these inconveniences. Mm -hmm. Hoping this is the right. Okay. For a while. Okay. So I'll just start my PowerPoint. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I'm on this part. Okay, so let's continue sharing. Okay, shared sound. Okay. Pharmacokinetics, the slide. Okay. So hoping it will again. Okay, let's go back here and why it's not playing. Okay, so I'm, I'm having problems for a while. I'm having problems with my PowerPoint. just for a while okay start again
Yeah. Okay, so let's continue. We will just continue with the T max and the C max. Okay. So to continue with our discussion on the on the half life. Okay, so we'll proceed. And for a while. I'll just share it for a while. Okay, okay. For a while. So I'm having a problem with my presentation. Okay. Hi. Concentration okay. of the drug in the body increases. Okay. So we'll in continue graph, with uh, the half, half life. life. Yeah. Which is often denoted T half is the time between t max and where i've drawn t half here okay to continue if we're considering the half life of the drug we are considering the half uh, life of the drug as our reference that it is very important to take into consideration the the time of administration must be uh take into account while for example if the drug is given every eight hours and your first administration of the drug is 12 noon so we expect that the drug be given next at eight o'clock so half between the half life between 12 o'clock and uh, the eight o'clock is already four o'clock so it means that the 50 percent of the drug already reaches the the plasma concentration then the other 50 percent are are getting out of the body simply because it may not be useful or in excess in the chemical composition. So that's why once it reached uh, once it reached the the eight o'clock, so the the other 50% are being absorbed. So that's why it will start again to to have the effect of the drug on the administration to reach again the desired effect. And after the eight hours, after the four hours, which is the half life, the 50% will already be absorbed uh, in the body and the rest will uh, decrease its concentration and be out of the body. So that's why the continuity of the administration of the drug is very significant. That's why there are some situations like uh, when an antibiotic is being given to the client and, and there are uh, uh, times that uh, it missed the administration, this could be a risk simply because you're, you're giving the time for the microorganism to, to synthesize its growth. So that's why we must not skip any medication and it must be administered accordingly because of the concept of the half-life of the drug. Once it reached already the, uh, the maximum uh, concentration level, that's the time that the half of the drug, uh, uh, the, the peak concentration level, the, the drug have already reached the plasma concentration. So very important concept of the right time and the right frequency with the peak concentration level and the half-life. Let's continue. So just to summarize, the time it has taken for the drug to drop from its maximum level to half of its maximum level is the half-life. On this graph, this is the time between T max and where I've drawn T half. There's a lot more to talk about with half-lives. There's a lot more to talk about with half-lives including rate laws and orders of reactions. But that is beyond the scope of this video, so we'll talk about that in a later tutorial. The last thing to look at is the area under the curve, and this I have illustrated by shading in the space under the graph. This represents the total exposure to a drug that the body receives. This... Okay, the... the... The graph or the shade that has been done is uh, when the when the drug start or begins its its uh, therapeutic effect until it reach its desired effect, meaning that is referring on the onset. The onset is referring to the beginning onset of action, and once the drug reach its uh, uh, overall interval from the time of the beginning until the end and reach its desired organ or system, that is the duration of action. So the next uh, is we have been 
oriented that the pharmacokinetics is related to letter M, which is the movement, wherein the drug passes through the different membranes to reach the target organ of the body. For example, if the drug being given uh, is basically an infection uh, with the lungs, so the antimicrobial agent that reached the plasma will reach the target organ, which is the lungs, where the infection exists. So that mainly consider that the drugs will pass through uh, across the, the body membranes until it reached the, uh, the plasma. So that's why the four stages of drug movement that we have mentioned is the ADME, which is the absorption, distribution, metabolism, and elimination. Now, to give you an overview, a clear background of why the, the root of administration is very important concept that we must know because it is uh, related to the concentration of the drug and the time of its effect. That's what I have mentioned to you that uh, once the drug reaches the plasma, the chances that it may already reach the peak concentration level. The longer the, the, the time that the drug is being taken before it reaches the plasma, the chance also that it may take time for the drug to have its effect. Just like for the oral medication, that once the drug enters the body and goes to the stomach before it proceeds to, uh, it will be absorbed by uh, the intestinal uh, blood vessels and reach the plasma. So I will have again a presentation of a audiovisual presentation for us to give an overview of what is really the importance of knowing the basic concepts are foundation of the circulatory system, organs involved when it comes to the distribution through the circulating blood, and uh, its significance why we understand, we may now understand that the movement depends on the route of administration. Let us continue. So this is a video presentation related to absorption. Hi. This tutorial is the second in the pharmacokinetics series, and in this video, we are going to have a look at absorption, or more specifically, routes of drug administration. If you haven't seen the previous tutorial, I highly recommend watching it before continuing with this video, as we will use terminology which was introduced and defined in that tutorial. So I'm going to begin by drawing a very simplified body plan. And this body plan follows the flow of blood from the digestive system to the arterial circulation. So let's see how this happens. So blood flows from the gut to the liver via the hepatic portal system. Blood then flows from the liver back through the venous circulation and into the right side of the heart. The blood then flows through the pulmonary arteries to the lungs, then from the lungs back to the left side of the heart, then out into the aorta and into the arterial circulation. What we are going to do is place drugs into different parts of this system and measure their concentration in the arterial circulation over a period of time. So I'll draw a set. Okay, if you will notice, uh, when it comes to the different organs involved, we have the, the GUT, the gastrointestinal tract. We have the liver. We have the vein, which is the blood vessel uh, with the unoxygenated blood. We have the heart, reaches to the right side of the heart and it is entered to the lungs. The, 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 the unoxygenated blood will be converted with the oxygenated blood. It goes back to the heart at the left side of the heart and it proceeds to the uh, aorta. Uh, and arterial circulation. Once the, the drug reaches already the, the arterial circulation or the oxygenated blood, that's the time that we conclude that uh, it reached already the uh, plasma concentration to, for the drug to, to distribute into the different compartments of the cells. Now, if you will notice later on, it will be best explained that once uh, with the journey or the pathway of this illustration, when the drug is being given orally, it will start here. So once it starts here, the liver will take part on the metabolic process because that will take part on the first pass effect. The first pass uh, effect or metabolism is uh, the action being taken by the liver so that to facilitate the, 
uh, detoxification or so that it may not reach the, the toxic effect of the drug that is not essential for the body. Just like, for example, when, when you are taking an iron-based drug, example, perosulfate, we have also reserved iron in the body. So if there are excess in the, in the iron, it will be removed out of the body. So usually, pagka liver base po ang, ang kinoconsider po na excretion ay via the intestinal tract. Yeah, that's why for those who may who are taking the iron-based drug, usually it, it will appear that the stool is a dark-colored stool. So that's an indication that the excess uh, uh, iron have been removed out of the body. For the multivitamins, uh, I know that if you will observe, the color of the urine is, uh, is observed. So it has a bright yellow color. So that is an, uh, an indication that it passed through via kidney. So uh, once the excretion, excretion uh, happens, then it reached the vein. It means that it reached already the blood. It reached already the plasma. So it will now be subject now for the distribution. So once the, 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 the drug had been in the vein, via plasma, goes to the heart, goes to the lungs, then goes back to the left side of the heart and systemic circulation. You can see this is the pathway wherein if you are, will be taking the uh, oral medication. And that is uh, associated with the time frame. So the longer the period, the longer that it will process through this pathway, the longer the time that it will reach its effect. Unlike, for example, later on, it will best explain. For example, if the drug will be given by the intravenous, so I'm talking about the drug that will be given inside the blood vessel, which is the vein. So it will not pass through anymore the liver. It will not pass through the, the gastrointestinal tract. But rather, it is a shorter period of time that it will reach already the peak concentration level because it will just pass through the heart, the lungs, the heart, and the arterial and will not pass through here. How much more if the drug will be given directly to the lungs? It will not go back to the left side of the heart. It goes to the left side of the heart and it goes to the systemic circulation. So the shorter period of time, it means that the past, the action or effect, it will be. So let us continue with the video. So I'll draw a set of axes. And on the y-axis, we have blood concentration of drug. And on the x-axis, we have time. We'll begin with the most common route of drug administration, which is orally. These drugs move through the digestive system and get absorbed by the gut. Then they move through this whole system, that is, the liver, the venous circulation, the heart, the lungs, back to the heart, and then to the arterial circulation. This takes quite some time, so what we see is a slow rise in the blood concentration and then a slow fall. Note that the C max is quite low and the T max is quite large. We'll now contrast that with intravenous administration. Assume that we give the same dose of the drug intravenously. And for those who have read ahead, this drug... Okay, just, just a note. The drugs that are being given in different routes of administration are the same dose. Huh? The same dose. But if you will notice, uh, the same dose but of different forms. So if, if you will notice, the difference between the route of administration but the same dose are being given. So the same level of dosage are being given. It is just in a different form, in a different route of administration. Later on, we will try to, to analyze of the, the concept of the peak concentration level. What, what uh, route of administration is the fastest period and shorter period of time that it will, regi, uh, it will already reach the peak concentration level. Let's continue. It does not undergo first pass metabolism. In intravenous or IV administration, the drug doesn't have quite such a long journey to reach the arterial circulation, as it only has to go to the heart, the lungs, back to the heart, and then to the arteries. This results in a quicker rise of drug concentration, which might look something like this on the graph. Note that the Cmax is larger and the Tmax is smaller, even though the dose was the same. 
This is because IV is a more direct route of administration than orally. Now contrast this with inhalation of a drug. Let's again assume that we have given the same dose of the drug as the last two examples, but this time we are giving it as an inhaled form. Many anaesthetics are actually given this way. The drug now only has to go to the heart and then straight on to the arterial circulation. This means we will see the concentration of the drug shoot up very quickly. So note the much larger Cmax and the even smaller Tmax via this route of administration. Also, remember that in all these three examples, the dose of the drug was identical, only the route of administration changed. So you can see how different routes may cause a radically different Cmax and Tmax. This is important when considering the applications for certain drugs. For instance, if you need pain relief quickly, then an IV analgesic will get into the system much quicker than an oral one. Conversely, a drug which has side effects at high concentrations may be toxic if given intravenously, but the same dose might be safe if given orally. Now I have three more points I want to make. Firstly, note that the area under the curve is the same for all these routes of administration. This is because the amount of exposure to the drug, that is, the dose, is the same. Just some routes of administration. Okay, as what we have mentioned, the dose of the drug are the same. Now, if you will notice, the number one is representing the drug that, are being, that, ha, that have been given through oral. The number two, the drug that had been given by uh, intravenous. And the number three represents the drug that had been given the lungs. So from the, from the base zero of the time and the concentration of the drug, it took longer time, if you will notice, it took a long period of time before it reached the peak concentration level. Why? Because if you will notice from the pathway, it will start from the GUT until the artery. And if you consider the time, it will pass through how many minutes and time that will reach arterial system. That's why if it, it, it did not reach all, it did not reach uh, immediately to the peak concentration level, but it took time for the for the drug to reach in the peak concentration level. Unlike for the number two, which is intravenous, which I have mentioned, it will not pass anymore the liver and the GUT but rather it was directly given by the, by the blood through the plasma. So if you will notice, the peak concentration level on a short period of time have been observed because it will pass through a shorter pathway as it reaches the arterial system. Yes, sir, how about if it is in the lungs? Since, if you will notice, number three, it reached already in a short period of time the peak concentration level because this already reached the lungs, and shorter pathway once it will reach the systemic circulation. What are those drugs that can be associated with the administration uh, with, with the lungs? It's through inhalation. Just like if a general anesthesia are being given, it is through the, uh, the, the inhalation. So it passed through the lungs and it has its fixed concent peak concentration level immediately because it can reach already in a short period of time going to the systemic circulation. So eventually, these are, the, these are the concepts of absorption. So when it comes to the absorption, we, we will consider the mnemonic AAS. Okay, what does, what does it mean? From the site of the administration until it reaches the, the drug across tissues and reach the systemic circulation. So the absorption will really end once it reaches the systemic circulation. And from the pathway and the video presentation that we have, you have noticed that the drug reaches the arterial circulation. So from the site, example, intravenous across tissues. What do we mean by across tissues? Across the blood vessel tissues, across the heart tissues. Then it goes back to, it goes rather to the arterial systemic circulation, which is the blood. So there are some factors that will really affect the degree and rate of drug absorption. So number one that we have mentioned is about the administration route. The administration route 
depends specifically on the effect and its time. So as what from the pathway have shown in the, in the pathway of the drug, uh, based from its effect to the physiologic effect to the, the, the different organs of the body. So from the example, sir, if the drug is directly given to the bone, so that's what we call intraosseous. So if it is given by uh, intraosseous or through the bone, we have there the red blood cells. So it means that the red blood cells that are being produced by the bone will carry already because we need the, the oxygenated blood so that it will reach through the different compartments of the body. So it means in the shorter period of time because it will reach uh, autom uh, immediately the peak concentration level. While going back to the problem, going back to intramuscular, how about the part of the intramuscular? Intramuscular, the drug it will be given by uh, muscle. So from the muscle, it will still undergo the different layers before it reaches the, the blood vessel and be absorbed with the, with the drug. So that's why it will pass through pa the tissues. So the longer that it will pass yung drug to the different layers, the longer the time that will reach its effect. So that's why most of the drugs that are being given that will direct its close uh, distribution to the oxygenated blood, which is the arterial circulation, the more that it will reach already the peak concentration level. Okay, question. Richmond, yes. And in ask ko lang po, bali di ba po sa inhalation po, yung kanina po, short period po, and short period time lang po until it reaches the plasma po, kasi yes. shorter pathway po. Pero po mm -hmm. yung time po until effect ng drug po, mas mas ano po ba mas matagal siya kaysa sa intravenous or mas mabilis po siya kaysa intravenous yeah actually from from the time frame po ang ang intravenous talaga it will take yung seconds di ba kasi ang bilis kasi niyan eh yung yung mismong pathway itself circulation na agad so from the from the blood vessel going to the the blood in the arterial system unlike for the inhalation for the inhalation mabilis yung effect niya why mabilis yung effect niya? Kasi if, if it will be inhaled, it will pass through the alveoli, di ba? the basic unit of the lungs is the alveoli, wherein it attach, it attach yung capillaries. So from the capillaries itself, papasok na yan sa left side of the heart. So ang next question is, very close yung time, di ba? From the intravenous, pasok sa heart, sa right side, goes to the lungs. While when it is in the inhalation, the, the drug will be, will be inhaled, but it will pass through na papunta na ng left side of the heart. So actually ang 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 difference niya kung bakit pa rin na sir, 'di ba sabi mo, uh, ang inhalation, we we may conclude na mas mabilis siyang mag-reach sa sa uh, sa arterial circulation. But but there are some evidences na ang intravenous pa rin is the best uh, best way na mas mabilis 'yon kasi it reach directly na dun sa sa blood na magsi-circulate. So if you will see later on po yung yung pinaka matrix po natin na mas mas mabilis yung effect pa rin ng intravenous and intraosseous kasi nasa blood na mismo yung gamot unlike for the lungs sa lungs kasi i-inhale mo pa siya pag inhale mo tsaka pa lang pa siya papasok sa lungs then papasok sa sa blood vessels so blood vessels papasok sa blood so yung pathway niya medyo matagal din although the concept itself Sir, mas close siya dun sa arterial sa arterial circulation. Pero still, yung yung point that the the drug is uh, being inhaled through the lungs, we expect shorter na yung journey eh. Pero yung process from the lungs papunta dun sa sa blood itself, medyo it will take the process pa. Unlike for the drug that is being given intravenous, dumirect na siya mismo sa plasma at magsi-circulate na lang siya to the heart, to the left side of uh, uh, le uh, to the right side of the heart goes to the arterial circulation. So in conclusion, mas mabilis pa rin yung drug na dumadirect na siya mismo being given sa intravenous compared to the inhalation. Although, di ba by concept natin, sir, di ba by shorter? Kaso nga yung pathway pa na from inhalation na magpa-pass through pa siya dun sa lungs before it may, may reach to the, the blood vessels, yun yung difference niya, yung pathway mismo. Close siya dun sa arterial system pero it will pass through pa the system ng lungs. Unlike for the intravenous na pumasok siya sa intravenous sa, le, sa, sa right side of the heart na unoxygenated siya pero ang maganda kasi doon nagsi-circulate na siya so mabilis na siya para pumasok towards the uh, right side of the heart so in conclusion the intravenous has the peak 
uh, effect po papunta sa 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 peak concentration level compared to the right side of the heart. So, yun nga lang from the graph that we have ano I have shown to you, di ba sir? Mas mabilis yung yung mas mataas yung yung peak concentration level niya. So, dun sa point example natin diyan anesthesia. Sa anesthesia, usually if we are giving a drug that is inhalation, ang bilis ng effect niyan sa 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 person to have the anesthesia effect throughout the body kasi nga pag inhalation siya, mabilis yung pasok niya by inhalation, it will pass through the lungs, alveoli, capillaries, blood vessels. Pero if we talk about yung yung bilis in terms of yung talagang time, ha, sa time we're talking about the time mas mabilis pa rin si intravenous kasi dumirect na siya doon sa blood vessel. I hope I have answered Mr. Richmond yes correctly. Yes po. Thank you po. Thank you so much. Okay, I may now entertain Ms. Coro, Jennifer. Um, yes po, Dean. Ask ko lang po, um, the, yung mga high concentration drugs po is the um, intravenous and then yung inhalation po. Yung orally po, um, slow concentration. Yeah. Eh, di yung IV po, pat inhalation, mas more toxicated sila sa katawan natin kung hindi natin maia-administer ng maayos. Definitely. Kasi ano siya eh, di ba? Unlike for the oral medications, papas papasok siya di ba sa, sa GUT tapos pasok sa liver. First pass effect. Di ba? So unlike, tama yung analysis. You have a correct analysis. Kasi mas risky yung toxic, mas risk yung toxic effect ng drug at adverse reactions kasi the drug itself had passed through directly to the plasma. You are very correct. You are very correct. Thank dahil you, mabilis, sir. dahil mabilis yung magreach sa please uh, sa sa peak concentration level, mas mabilis din magre-respond yung body natin if if it is correct yung 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 dose mo. If it is correct yung yung drug mo, kaya ang bilis mag-manifest kaya pagka for example, you administered it uh, intravenously, biglang lalabas na agad yung manifestation of with the adverse reactions and toxic effect. Unlike for oral, 'di ba? It will pass through pa the GI matagal pa bago magmanifest yung 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 reaction kasi tutulong pa it could be prevented by the by the liver for detoxification and it could have chances pa to remove out of the body so for medication safety be very careful na yung the 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 period we're in once it will reach yung yung root of administration na magre-reach agad sa plasma careful tayo be very careful tayo there's no room for error kasi very fast na yung magiging uh, effect niya kasi nga it is carried already by the plasma thank you so much for that analysis miss coro really appreciate it how about a question Ah, okay, a comment. Kaya po pala mabilis din ang sinasabing tama ng mga drugs na in-inhale like marijuana. Correct analysis. Like marijuana, shabu, pag pills, sinasabing nila late or dulo ang tama. Nasa process po pala on how it will take. Actually, uh, you have a correct analysis also on that. Kaya kung kung mapapansin ninyo, pag in-inhale, ito tulad nito, di ba? Yung 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 mga what you call this yung drugs that are being abused na ini-inhale yan yung mga methamphetamine hydrochloride na ini-inhale so ini-inhale siya ang bilis niya pumasok sa circulation until it goes to the brain may mga ibang drugs din na ano ha ina-abuse na na, na naglilid din into into addiction so yan usually mga narcotic drugs na ang effect niya Uh, dumadirect na sa, sa brain. So, yan. Yung most ng mga inhalation at saka mga intravenous, these are the drugs that will really consider the, the fast uh, effect to the brain. So, kung oral siya, yun. Longer period of time yung effect. So, I hope I satisfied. Thank you so much for your for your comment. I need to recognize you with uh, Winnie V. Uh, thank you for your, for your comment. And that's very true. Okay. Another. So feel free to to unmute or share, raise your hand or raise your questions in the chat box. Another. How about the patient's age? When it comes to the patient's age and and physical condition, we have already we have already concluded that once it increases the age, it increases the age. It follows through that it slows metabolic activity. So that's why uh, I may I may just have a question to you. So, which of the two population groups may have slow metabolic activity or slower metabolic activity? Is it pediatrics or elders? Can I see your answers in the chat box? Uh, 
which of the following population groups may have slower metabolic activity? Do we have the elders or the older older adults? Elders or older adults population group or the pediatric? So I'm seeing responses of 17. So we are 32. I hope uh, the others can still respond. Respond. We have 18. So hoping it will increase. My energy will keep on going and going and going. Yeah, 23, 24, 25. And we will try to analyze later what do we mean uh, based from your responses. So 27, 28. So hoping it will reach 31. Okay. So 27. How about for the others? Wake up, wake up. 28. We have 29. Okay. We'll be looking. I'm, 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 I'm. I'm positively looking for 30. So we have the missing link. <laughs> Yan, okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much. It really maximizes your responses. And most of your answers, actually most, actually all <laughs> of your answers pertains to elders. You are correct. Kaya if, with this analysis of absorption, even oral and intravenous, which of the two which of the two population groups ang high risk for mga uh, hypersensitivity reaction, adverse reactions, toxic effect? The elders. Why? Kasi uh, kung slow ang metabolic activity mo, metabolism is very important for cellular activity. The cells are the ones that are receiving impulses so that the body will, will increase its uh, defense against this uh, processes, yung toxic effect. Pero for, for uh, individuals such as the, the older uh, population, older adults, elders, they are the ones na high risk for these adverse reactions and toxic effect because the body is responding. It may have a delay response of the body due to the delay metabolic activity, which I told you that the cells may need metabolism, metabolic activity to facilitate immediate response against or against this uh, processes that may cause harm to individuals. So very particular tayo. Kaya, kaya not all medications are, are, are being given to elders. Very particular tayo dun sa mga drugs that may not cause harm. And usually po, remember, the most of the oral medic, most of the drugs are hepatotoxic and neprotoxic. What does it mean? Yung mga, mga oral medications, kasi since pag oral medication, it will pass through the first pass effect, yung first pass metabolism. Ang, ang usually, ki, pin, uh, ang nakakaroon ng forceful workload dyan, ang increase ang workload dyan ay ang liver at saka ang kidney. So that to help the body attain its balance. Kaya if ever nag-overdose, ang liver agad. Uh, nagre-rescue pagdating sa sa pag uh, uh, protect ng other major organs of the body before. Kasi si liver agad ang unang mag action pag oral overdose ng drugs para hindi mag sa brain. Kasi once yung toxic toxic level of drug mag sa brain, doon na tayo nagkakaroon ng problema ng comatose. Because that's the point that the toxic effect of the drug already reached the brain. Pag nag-change na yung consciousness. There are some instances na nag-overdose, di ba? pero hindi siya immediately nagkakos agad ng, ng loss of consciousness. But once the, the person already uh, take the overdose of the drug, tapos nag loss of consciousness ibig sabihin the liver had a hard time to facilitate the metabolism para ma-remove out of the body kasi alam nyo po di ba there are, there are many ways of excret excretion so but one that is common is through the urine so kung ikaw for example ay uh, for example lang isang tao ay nag overdose na what nag wag na ikaw na yung ibang tao ay nag overdose the kidney must also facilitate uh urination to remove the excess uh, chemical composition. Pero uh, during that overdose, yung liver mo, hirap, uh, it, 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 it's having difficulty to, to, to detoxify because of the overdosage. Ang kidney din, nagkakos ng difficulty to uh, excrete urination. And that's the time na pag nagkaroon na ng loss of consciousness kasi hindi nga nag-facilitate ng urination. Pag hindi nag-facilitate ng urination or in any way, yung iba, di ba, usually they need to vomit. They need to vomit kasi para hindi na mag-reach at ma-absorb ng intestinal tract. So, yan yung ginagawa para 
para ma-facilitate yung pag-remove. It could be uh, uh, mag mag-vomit as, as one of the the response or compensatory response of the body to prevent it na ma-absorb sa intestinal kaso if it it if it is over time na that it already process yung yung uh, intake of the drugs of overdosage at alam na natin that it really reach already the the circulation and the liver is working on it so do na tayo mag magtatakbo na sa hospital so that it will consider na an antidote. Yung antidote naman is to counteract yung effect ng drug because it already reached a toxic effect. Kaya for nurses, you really need to to take note that if the situation that the patient is reaching adverse reaction, toxic effect, kasi ang toxic effect is the one that is life-threatening. So yung adverse reaction, it will give you a hint already para ma-prevent specifically yung mag-lead into toxic effect. But pag nag-reach na yun sa toxic effect, uh, nurses, you need to to be knowledgeable about antidote. So, yung magka-counteract dun sa effect ng drug because it already reached the the circulatory uh, system, which is the circulating blood. So, yeah. There is some, yeah, correct. Uh, I wish to acknowledge the the, the 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 sharing of Mr. Gasila Matthew. Nagbibigay po sila ng activated charcoal through NGT, then defecate po din from experience. Okay. Now, dun sa situation po na na nagbibigay ng charcoal kasi ang charcoal di ba nagaani yan eh nagaabsorb so yung activated charcoal yan the tube will be inserted into the nasal then it reach the stomach tapos as much as possible para kung nag-overdose yan pag nagreach yan sa stomach iaabsorb niya yon tapos i-drain ulit yan ha i-drain yan ngayon on the other hand there's another way kasi di ba uh, if the, the patient can't urinate the other way around of excretory is via the intestinal tract. So sa intestinal tract, magpa-pass through yan papalabas ng stool. So doon naman siya magpa-pass through by excretion. So very correct analysis. So doon sa mga mga eh, sharing ninyo, it's very very ano, very aligned with our discussion. And these are these are things that I really appreciate whenever we do discussion. So thank you for those sharings ha. So Patient's age and the physical condition is very important. Another condition that we can consider is, for example, we have been aware that the drug will take its effect once it reaches the blood. Paano po if the patient have been diagnosed with, with a blood problem? Simply, anemia. Okay. For anemia, we are aware that the level of the red blood cell is low. And uh, the RBC is composed of hemoglobin and hematocrit. Question, sir, what is this uh, hemoglobin and hematocrit? The hemoglobin is the one that carries the oxygen and the hematocrit refers to the volume. So if the uh, red blood cell is decreased in anemia, although we have different types of anemia, decrease in anemia, so uh, it is directly associated po na decrease din ang oxygen at decrease din ang volume. So if the volume is insufficient to carry the the to carry the drug itself to its indicated organ it will cause a possibility of delay effect of the drug kaya kaya that's why there are situations na for those who have uh, anemia they are correcting first the problem with anemia kino correct muna nila yung yung problem with anemia before they start a specific medication because it may it may be useless if that will consider yung administration ng drug, pero it will delay naman yung desired effect. Kasi nga, we are aware that the blood has a major, uh, have a major uh, 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 responsibility when it comes to, or function rather, when it comes to the distribution and effect of the drug. So that's a typical example. Another, diabetic. For diabetic patients naman, our problem naman is hyperglycemia. So what do you mean by hyperglycemia? Hyper is increased. Glycy is referring to sugar. Emia is referring to blood. So what's the problem naman with hyperglycemia? Ang problem naman with hyperglycemia is mataas yung sugar, blood sugar level. So pag tumataas yung blood sugar level, what is expected with the, with the blood? Is it hypoviscous referring to viscosity volume? Hypoviscous or hyperviscous? So can I can I see response to the chat box? So for diabetic client, if there is hyperglycemia or increased blood sugar, do we expect hyperviscous blood or hypoviscous? Or you may just respond hyper or hypo. Okay? 
So you may just have response hyper or hypo. Do we expect for a client with diabetes or diabetes that have or, or that who are who is also experiencing hyperglycemia may have the hypo or hyper viscosity of the blood? So the viscosity is referring to the volume of blood. So let's see. So we have 20 responses. Hoping I can I can see more of your responses. You may just have hypo or hyper. So let's see. We have 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. So we have two more, two more. The other two, please respond. I'm expecting for your response so that it I will reach also that energy level. <laughs> okay. So anyway. So the probably there's some uh, the other two are ha experiencing connectivity concerns, so I do understand. So most of your answers, let's see, hyper, 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 hyper. Actually, when the client is having hyperglycemia, just seem just just with your experience in cooking, when you mix sugar in water, the more sugar that you that you put in the water, that causes the increase in the viscosity, right? The more sugar that you put, the more viscous yung, yung, yung mismong uh, mixture. So just the same with the blood. The more sugar, the, the higher the sugar level, it may cause the viscosity. At yung viscosity of the blood na yon, it will cause a slow uh, flow of the blood. Pag nag-slow ang flow ng blood, it will cause also a delay in the transport of the drug via plasma. So that's a problem. Kaya that's why if you notice, uh, diabetic clients who are experiencing wound, okay, you have wounds, okay, wounds. Why it cause a delay? Why it cause a delay for, for diabetic clients to heal wounds? Because of the delay circulating blood that reached the, the wound. So if the client have, uh, if the client, who have the wound or has already kahit nga yung 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 punctured wound pa lang the the client are already being given antibiotic kasi nga it will take time to reach the point of the infected area because of the client have been identified with increased blood sugar level and it affects the circulating blood to to reach the 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 area where it needed to protect from any infection so that's why it caused also the delay in the wound healing. And continuously, we are giving antibiotics so that to protect the, the wound from any infection. Yun nga lang, that's the, that's the main concern. Kailangan, ano munang gawin? We need to correct first the sugar level, the blood sugar level, before we administer the drug. Because it could be more efficient to, to uh, reach its desired effect kung okay yung blood sugar level. Okay, letter C. Lipid or water solubility of the drug. So it's 710. Once it reaches 715, we'll have a health break. So degree and rate of drug absorption. So lipid or water solubility of the drug. Class, if we say water soluble, this could be break down easily into water. Okay. For lipid soluble drug, this may take time to absorb and break down. So that's why. Um, most of the most of the water soluble drug that are being taken orally, yaan yung it can be easily break down para mas mabilis yung absorption towards the intestinal tract. Ang lipid po, it will take time pa to 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 break it uh, to break down its chemical composition before it will be absorbed. So it may depend on the lipid or the water solubility of the drug. Letter D, it's the potential uh, interactions with other drugs or food. Okay, there are some situations like this. Huh? There are some drugs drugs that must not be mixed with uh, highly acidic beverages. Okay, what do you mean by highly acidic beverages? Ito yung mga, mga natural fruit juices pero mataas yung acid level. So most of the, gas, most of the oral drugs po ay gastric irritants. So tapos you will you will you will uh, give the drug pa tapos highly irritating yung uh, highly irritating sa, sa stomach tapos highly acidic nagkakaroon na ng premature breakdown yung composition ng drug and once it reaches the stomach na may hydrochloric acid pa siya so nagkakaroon na siya ng premature breakdown so will it reach its ano will it reach its desired uh, 
composition before it will be metabolized by the liver? Hindi. So that's why there are some instances also. Ito ha, very common. There are some drugs because you don't like the you don't like the the taste of the drug. You are taking it with milk. There are some drugs ha. There are some drugs that may cause the lactose intolerance. So that's why yung lactose itself uh, interacts with the drug at nagkakaroon din niya ng ng uh, uh, premature breakdown. So uh, the best is to 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 take the drug with the ano, take the drug with the, what do you call this with with water. Although if you are familiar, meron tayong mga mga food that are given by the nasogastric tube. But if situations like na para hindi siya dapat supposedly minimix with with that uh, mixture, dapat if you will consider the administration of the drug, it must be mixed with water, not but not with the with the mixture that you will give to your client because it may it may cause the possibility that it will have the premature make breakdown of the chemical composition of the drug and it may not meet its desired effect. So. Uh, Dean is drinking drug with an electrolyte. Ah, okay. This is now. Yeah, very good question. Very good question. Ang concern natin dan, pag kami electrolyte drink, ah, uh, it's it's helpful kasi electrolyte siya. Electrolyte kasi, it will be helpful for the cell. And we know, we all know that the cells have a major function when it comes to drug effect. So, when it comes to it, uh, it is safe, but if there are situations na yung patient mo ay merong electrolyte imbalance, that's the time that it is not safe. Kaya that's why you need to take into consideration yung diagnosis of the client. Example, if you're taking the if if the drug that you are you are giving while you are giving electrolyte drink, for example, you are giving uh, an electrolyte drink to a client who's experiencing dehydration. Okay, that's that's the point. Now the uh, the the doctor will prescribe a drug. So, will it be safe to give the electrolyte drink with the drug? Kaya usually, for those who are experiencing dehydration, they are being tested primarily with electrolyte levels. Because situations like very careful tayo na pagka ang patient is, is dehydrated, the level of potassium is very crucial. Kaya if ever the patient may have uh, a problem with uh, is not having a problem with potassium tapos magsusupplement ka pa ng potassium it may counteract dun sa drug itself kasi for example uh, the the client is high risk for potassium or low level of potassium then uh, the doctor prescribe a potassium supplement tapos you will take it with an electrolyte drink ayun so pwedeng pwedeng mag-cost yun ng problem so much that we really need to to identify the patient's condition. Tapos, if it is evidence based that you have diagnostic results, much better. So water is still the best, ano? Is still the best na it may not counteract results. So another ano po may question. Din ba question? Bakit bawal inumin yung medicine with cold water? Um, hindi siya bawal. Hindi siya bawal po. Wala namang literature that that will uh cause any any counteract uh, counter it will counteract the effect of the drug when drinking cold water so wala po siyang ano wala po siyang uh, scientific basis uh, another is sir yung letter d d rin i'm sorry yung letter d rin ba okay let's go back okay yung letter d rin po ba reason why some medicine are taken empty stomach or dapat walang kinain after 15 ah okay so this is referring naman we need be on your on your ano on your on the situation that why there are some drugs are being taken uh, on empty stomachs and why it it must be taken on a um uh, full stomach the point of why it must be taken on an empty stomach just like for example i'll give you an example anti tb drug Yung anti-TB drug, usually they are taking this drug early uh, in the morning, upon wake up early in the morning on an empty stomach. Oh sir, diba you have mentioned na most of the oral drugs will lead to gastric irritation. Yes, but the point is that of the example, the drug is repampicin. That is an anti-TB drug. It is given early in the morning before meal simply because that's the time na upon wake up in the morning, that's the time of peak production of secretions. 
So yung peak production of secretions, nandyan yung nabuo at yung production mismo ng microorganism are also at its peak. Ngayon, on an empty stomach, if it is given on an empty stomach, the, the point that it will be absorbed, yan, pwedeng mag-cause yan ng absorb. Kasi pag may food, pwedeng mag-counteract pa yan dun sa uh, synthesis ng hydrochloric acid before ma-breakdown ma pa yung drug mo. Unlike if it is given on an empty stomach, the drug is, uh, the, the stomach is focused when it comes to its breakdown so that it will be absorbed um, immediately para ma-prevent yung production of secretions and inhibit production of the tubercle bacilli and the cause of the uh, tuberculosis. The point naman of why there are some drugs that are being given on full stomach kasi ito yung mga uh, drugs that will cause gastric irritation. Ano yung mga drugs that will cause gastric irritations? Usually steroids. Yung mga zone, steroids. Uh, another another dose, ibuprofen. Yan, yung mga, mga, mga muscle relaxants. These are not usually taken on an empty stomach. Yung mga antibiotics, that's such as those drugs ending in mycin, these are not given on an empty stomach because it will really it will really high, cause a high risk of, of, of ulceration at pwedeng mag-lead sa bleeding pag uh, this is not taken on a full stomach. So yung basic knowledge na yon when it comes to, to this responsibility, so when is the time that you need to give the drug on an empty stomach and on, the, on, on full stomach, it is for the purpose that we need to, to know its effect when it's given on an empty and full stomach. So thank you for, for the sharing. Uh, Dean, Paano po ayon ito? Very relevant, very relevant 'yung mga questions. Ito, di totoo po ba na pag uh, iiniinom 'yung medication po with coffee, hindi gagana 'yung medication? Ito, ganito 'yan. Kasi ang ang problem kasi with caffeine, 'yan. Stimulant kasi ang caffeine. So ang problem with the caffeine, uh, dahil stimulant siya, nagko siya kasi ng ano, ng uh, increase metabolic activity sa cell. So ano nangyayari ngayon doon? So yung 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 dahil increase yung metabolic activity ng cell hindi hindi niya na na break down or na absorb yung yung needed uh, chemical composition ng drug that will act upon. So yun yung isa sa mga nagiging effect. It's because nagii-stimulate siya ng increased metabolic activity at nagkakaroon ng premature breakdown of the drug. So uh, hindi naman total hindi gagana yung medication but it will Uh, cause uh, the the problem with absorption of the correct chemical co composition of the drug kasi nga yung cells mo so sobrang active niya na breakdown niya na yung 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 mismong component na hindi na siya sufficient yung 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 mismong uh, composition niya so that to circulate pa and distribute so next po ano po din paano po pag lactobacillus yung kasabay ayan <laughs> paano daw po example ha if the drug is being given You see, ano, drinking with, with Yakult. Kasi yun ito, di ba, may mga lactobacillus. Actually, this could be helpful. Why helpful? Kasi ang lactobacillus, uh, ini-strengthen dyan ang, ano, eh, ang gastric flora. So, pag ini-strengthen niya ng gastric flora, this will, this will promote yung, yung healthy cell in the stomach to act upon ko at taak apan dun sa drug yung correct action that the drug must must uh, must break and 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 basically metabolize so that wala namang contraindication as based from studies so hoping i uh, i satisfied your your answers and I, i i'm really happy with your questions very relevant questions very relevant questions so i think We do have. We are now 7:20. Pero let's see. Kung kung I will have this last slide before we have our break. I know this has been introduced to you, to all of you during the fundamentals of nursing. And absorption is dependent on the administration routes. Ang administration routes po, routes routes. Okay, are are the area wherein the drug will start. It's absorption, the beginning, the onset of the 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 drug that will take effect. So there are some drugs na enteral roots, and we have the parenteral roots. So pag sinabi natin enteral, so these are the 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 roots that will direct in the gastrointestinal tract. 
when it comes to the parenteral roots, these are absorbed outside the gastrointestinal tract. So obviously, it could be through the blood vessels, it could be muscles, subcutaneous tissues, it could be directly to the mucosa of the, the, the nose, the eyes, skin, inhalation. So these are the parenteral roots. So it's outside the gastrointestinal tract. So since uh, it's uh, 7.25, I will uh, give you time to, to have the health break. So we could have the 15 minutes health break for you to hydrate yourselves and stretch your extremities because you deserve it. It's very hard to, to really manage in, on the, in the online, but I am very much happy now because I, I know that you are very interested in our topics for today. So take time to, to hydrate and move your extremities to promote circulation. So let's have a break for 15 minutes.
Okay, so let us continue. So we have almost maximized our our health break for uh, less than 20 minutes. Okay, so let us continue with our discussion. So we have uh, considered that the absorption could be in, in various medication administration routes, uh, routes or uh, we have enteral roots and we have the parental roots. This is somehow a, a concern eh, kasi di ba pag roots, routes, so let's see, let's discover what's the correct term. But anyway, we have uh, some of the, we have review, we have to review some of the, the concepts pertaining to the enteral roots. So we have the oral. So uh, the, the blue, uh, the blue close, uh, the blue letters and number that uh, are indicated in a close open parenthesis is just a mnemonic for us to, to be guided. So I just made this mnemonic for us to continue uh, some of ways to, to understand concepts. So for oral medication, we're considering two CASGIP. So what do you mean by two CASGIP? Two Cs, actually, that's two Cs. First C is most of the oral medication are convenient. Okay, convenient because it will take oral, there's no pain. It's uh, most common because most of the preparations are, are even in the over-the-counter are oral medications. So we have the two Cs, common and convenient. The AS is absorption is low, AS. Absorption is low simply because as uh, I have told you that it will pass through the, the GUT before it will uh, reach the plasma. Now, GI refers to most of these drugs or oral medications may have gastric irritation. And the P is usually the, the oral medications are for pain. Now, these two CASGIP are, are the common uh, uh, definitions and descriptions for the oral medications. And usually the preparations that we consider for oral medications are tablets, capsules, pills, or liquids for uh, pediatric clients. Now, with this oral medication of two, at oral roots rather, not medication, oral roots, uh, the two CASGIP are considered. The other one is we have the buccal. For buccal, we just remember C group. So what do you mean by C group? We have the C is uh, and G. So usually the administration is between the, the cheeks and the gums. And we have the, the pH. The pH is referring the, that it will need an optimal strength of pH. pH is referring to the, the concentration. It may need a pH, uh, a high pH, so that it will cause an absorption or efficient absorption. Now, usually the drug that are being given for, for buccal root is uh, our pain relievers for cancer patients. So a typical, uh, one of the example is fentanyl. Fentanyl are for pain medication for cancer, and it is buccal. Now, when when it comes to when it comes to the buccal, there are many drugs, but more are identified for cancer pain. Next, we have sublingual. So let us have a review. Two CASG for oral. We have the two Cs: convenient and common. Uh, AS absorbs slowly. Uh, GI it may cause gastric irritation and P usually for pain. Then we have the C group, a C group for buccal, it's administered, medication administered between cheeks and the gums. And it may need a, strong, uh, a stronger uh, strength of the pH. If we talk about sublingual, we can just remember TARBS. TARBS meaning uh, we have the tongue. So it's under the tongue. AR absorb rapidly. So this is, uh, an opposite of absorb slowly with the oral. It absorbed rapidly. BS is referring to direct uh, bloodstream. So that's TARBS. So the example of drug that may be given for sublingual is nitroglycerin. Nitroglycerin is uh, our, our classification of drugs usually for chest pain. And usually chest pain happens if there's constriction of the blood vessel. What are the common causes of constrictions of blood vessel? Usually, yan, ang common cause niyan ay uh, cigarette smoke, the nicotine that causes the endothelial lining, irritation of the endothelial lining. Another is that of uh, there could be uh, alcohol. The high concentration of alcohol can irritate the endothelial lining of the blood vessel. So that's why it may cause the constriction. 
If there will be constriction, there will be a delay in the blood flow. And if it will delay the blood flow, it will decrease oxygen supply. So nitroglycerin is a vasodilator. Vaso meaning blood vessel. So it may dilate. The action is to dilate the blood vessel. So for emergency uh, chest pain, if it may not be managed through intravenous, the immediate uh, intervention is giving a vasodilator under the tongue. Okay, so that is TARBS. Next, how about rectal? For rectal, we just remember the what we call RAIT. RAIT is uh, the drug will be administered by a rectal or rectum. AI is we have absorbed, it absorbs AIT, it is absorbed in the intestinal tract. So most of the, the, the drug, as a, an example, is very much common in the commercial. We have the bisacodyl or dulcolax. Uh, dulcolax is used to manage problem with constipation. So uh, we have also a tablet, okay, a tablet, an oral preparation for for the dulcolax, and there is also a preparation which is a suppository. If we say suppository, it could be inserted in the rectal because. Remember, class, the rectal, uh, the rectal sphincter is attached to the intestine and it's highly vascular. That's why when, whenever there are some situations, di ba, sa mga may hemorrhoids or if there are constipation, usually na pag nag-cause ng irritation, a scratch lang, nagko na agad ng bleeding. It's because it's highly vascular. Similar as for the oral uh, mucosa natin, di ba? Pag nag-cause dyan ng sore or nag-cause dyan ng, ng any scratch, or, or laceration, it's uh, bleeding. That is uh, one of the observation. So another is, if, for example, for fever, we have paracetamol in a form of tablet for oral. Liquid, it could be for the uh, pediatric clients. But for situations like it is contraindicated by oral and still the patient do not have IV line, it could be also prevented to have convulsion due to the febrile condition through suppository. That's why we have also paracetamol suppository, which is very, which is usually given for pediatric clients. So, yeah, suppository, correct. Suppository. So, let us now have a recall of the enteral routes. We have oral, we have two casgib. It's common and convenient. Uh, uh, AS absorbs slowly. GI, uh, we have it causes gastric irritation and it's for pain. For buccal, we have C group. We have uh, the medication will be administered by uh, the cheeks and the gums. Okay, between the cheeks and the gums, then it may need a higher level of pH. Then, uh, how about for the sublingual? The sublingual, we may just remember TARBs. It's under the tongue, absorbs rapidly directly to bloodstream. And for rectal, we have RAIT, which is rectum, administered into the rectum, and it is absorbed via the intestinal tract. So these are the enteral routes. How about for the uh, parenteral? For the parenteral, let's have intravenous. So we could just remember DUBS. DUBS meaning direct, direct access to bloodstream. Direct access to bloodstream, DUBS. So uh, the most common use uh, intravenous uh, fluid are being given, normal saline, lactated ringers. So this will be introduced to you. These are usually given intravenously because, again, the action itself may reach the plasma concentration because it is given directly to the blood vessel and may reach the blood itself. So just remember dubs. Next, we have the what we call uh, intramuscular. For intramuscular, we could just remember ML, not mobile legend, MLHSB3. Okay, MLHSB3. If we have MLHSB3, it means the M stands for muscle, okay, muscle, LH, less hazardous, then uh, we have the what do you call this? So muscle, less hazardous, tapos SB, stays in blood longer. And uh, the usual, uh, the, the maximum recommended amount or volume of drug that will be given is only up to 3 ml. Remember this, class. Ah. 
If it's beyond 3 ml, it may not be conducive for this site simply because it may cause irritation of the muscle tissues. And once it will cause irritation, it may lead to inflammation sooner if it may not, it may not be prevented, may lead to muscle tissue death. So on this, on this perspective, it is very important to, to consider that the, the more that we are knowledgeable with these areas, the more that we are promoting safety to our client. Now, always remember also that intramuscular is not rec recommended on ventrogluteal and dorsogluteal areas. Why? Because there could be a possibility that you may hit nerves in this area. That's why it's not recommended. And once you hit nerves, this may cause a possible paralysis. Okay, so remember ML, uh, ML, HS, B3. Muscle, it's administered muscle, less hazardous. And we have uh, stays longer in the blood. 3M3 is the 3ML that may have the maximum volume. Now, an example here is haloperidol. So haloperidol is an antipsychotic drug. So these are given to patients with mental uh, maladaptive uh, behavior. So why it is given uh, why it is given intramuscular? So if you will notice, pag if it is given intramuscular, ang sabi, it stays longer in the blood. Kung it will stay it will stay longer sa blood, the longer yung effect. Okay, the longer yung effect. So that's why most of the antipsychotic drug may be given through intramuscular for situation that it is needed. But more binibigay ito for a longer effect of the drug. So other than the intramuscular, we have the what we call subcutaneous. For subcutaneous, we may just remember F FTSM2. Okay, what does it mean? The, the, the FT is these are fatty tissues and SM, it is between the skin and the muscle. Okay, fatty tissues between the skin and the muscle. What is 2? For intramuscular, the 3 ml is the one that has a maximum volume for uh, administration. While for the uh, subcutaneous, the maximum is 2 ml and minimum of 0.5 ml. Never administer class ha, more than 2 ml for subcutaneous because let's go back to the reason to the reason that it may cause subcutaneous uh, tissue irritation and soon it will cause a problem with the inflammation and, uh, and, and soon may lead to tissue death. So most common po dito na binibigay uh, alam nyo po, kung, kung ang, ang intramuscular, the drug stays longer sa blood, ito, gradual yung absorption. What do you mean yung gradual? Mabagal yung absorption. That's why it, most of the drugs that are being given sa, sa subcutaneous are insulin. This is a, a hormone which is common for what? For mga, mga diabetes na dependent sila at uncontrolled ang blood sugar. Heparin, anticoagulant, these are drugs that will prevent the clotting and this will cause kasi a problem pag nag-clot na mag-obstruct sa blood vessels. So bakit gradual? Kasi once an insulin is given, uh, may effect kasi, may, may, may physiologic and danger, physiologic danger or effect pag sudden at mabilis ang pagbigay ng insulin. Kaya hindi siya binibigay intravenously. Eh. May mga binibigay intravenously but it must be uh, with safety precaution. Like for the insulin, uh, gradual siya. So kung high ang blood sugar, gradual siyang binababa. Kasi ang iniiwasan natin is to have hypoglycemic shock. Ang sudden drop of blood sugar is also uh, dangerous. Kasi yung sudden drop of the blood sugar, mag naman siya sa hypoglycemic shock. So this will cause a problem with the circulation. Heparin naman is gradual din ang dapat na absorption nito kasi ang problem, pag very sudden ang effect nito, pwede naman siyang hindi mag-cause ng, ng since pineprevent niya yung coagulation, pwedeng mag naman sa problem with bleeding. So that's why we need to, to monitor the client before giving this drug. So subcutaneous tissues ito. So 0.5 ang minimum and 2 ml po ang maximum. So on the perspective of this, uh, yeah, so my, maybe you are overwhelmed with this, with this presentation. But most of the, most, uh, most of the 
the I am now projecting here in the medication administration have been uh, uh, discussed in my previous slides because I have mentioned about uh, topicals. So this is for the skin. Uh, these are can be given also topicals could be given also via eyes, ears, on skin. Later on, we'll discuss about the rights of medication. Uh, we have it includes the the responsibilities. We have also drugs that could be inhalation, solid, and it could be transdermal solutions. And these are the sites. We have the parenteral and the enteral. So we may not anymore concentrate here because it will it was already discussed. Now, when it comes to the root of administration, time and until effect. Okay, insulin po. Ayan. Insulin po most commonly in administered sa part ng mataba. Like sabi, yes, correct. Correct. Why why may mga situations? Kasi di ba tayo, aware tayo na ang ng intramuscular, intramuscular, ina-administer yan dito sa deltoid, 90 degrees. Pero may mga instances for those who are talagang uh, magbibigay ng insulin. Bakit sa belly? Kasi ano to eh? Since we have mentioned subcutaneous fatty, fatty tissues, so gradual yung magiging absorption niya. So, uh, at saka yung most pag may mga needles na, yung pre, 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 uh, uh, prepared, ano, pre-syringe na preparation, ibig sabihin it is already in the syringe, it will just inject. It is given also in 90 degrees kasi ang knowledge natin di ba sa subcutaneous, 45 degrees. Pero may mga binibigay na 90 degrees dito sa may, sa may belly, uh, dito sa abdominal, it's because yung needle itself may reach only subcutaneous. So since we have mentioned naman ang, fat, ang, ang subcutaneous are fatty tissues in between the skin, uh, so this will, skin and muscle, so this will facilitate pa rin the objective of the gradual absorption. So you're correct, Miss Angelica. So let us now consider yung root of administration in relation to time until effect. So kanina, we have mentioned yung intravenous. Ang intravenous po, ay magte-take effect ang drug at intraosseous yung direct sa 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 bone it's because what's common with intra intraosseous and intravenous blood once it will reach the, the plasma it will cause the immediate uh, plasma peak plasma concentration so 30 to 60 seconds so can you imagine yung 1 minute effect 1 minute effect so kung ito naman ay through endotracheal endotracheal is uh, from the term self, in self, endo, endo is inside, and tracheal, it will reach the trachea. So the tube that are being inserted inside and which will reach the trachea, this is the tube that is connected to ventilator. So there are some drugs that are being given by endotracheal, just like anesthesia are also being given in the tracheal. Inhalation, anesthesia could be given also by a face mask. So inhalation could also be given by a popping sa mga steroids with asthma. Kaya ang bilis di ba mag-effect mag, mag yan. Uh, uh, another is uh, nebulization. So, via inhalation yan. Uh, it will facilitate already yung, yung opening of the airways in 2 to 3 minutes. Can you imagine that? Endotracheal and inhalation, 2 to 3 minutes. So, yung explanation natin kanina why intravenous are more endotracheal uh, and, 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 and inhalation, bakit mas matagal pa? It's because intravenous, dumirect na siya sa blood. Sa, sa endotracheal, even very close na sa arterial uh, circulation siya, it will still pass through kasi pa rin via the lung tissues before it reach the, the blood and plasma. Now, for sublingual, sublingual is 3 to 5 minutes. Kaya kung makikita ninyo yung, yung kung, kung contraindicated siya sa intravenous, uh, punton tayo sa inhalation. Kung walang preparation ng inhalation, pasok tayo sa sublingual. So it may still depend on the preparation. Eh. If it is, it's very important for us to be aware of the root of administration. Kung may mga preparation, may preparation ba yan for IV? May preparation ba yan for sublingual? May preparation ba yan for inhalation? Meron, meron, meron ganyan na may preparation sa for intravenous, yung mga, yung mga uh, bronchodilator, yung nag-open ng bronchi, uh, it, will, it will dilate the bronchi. Merong intravenous, meron siyang via inhalation, meron din siyang uh, oral. So that to facilitate yung uh, pag-open ng airways. Just same as for the ano, for the cardiovascular drugs, di ba? May mga drugs tayo that are being given intravenously. May mga wala lang tayong inhalation, but pero meron tayong mga gamot na binibigay sa lingual. So uh, yung yung effect to control the blood pressure. So 3 to 5 minutes po 'yan. So intramuscular 
10 to 20 minutes. So can you imagine 10 to 20 minutes? Matagal siya, di ba? It stays longer. At lalo na for subcutaneous, 15 to 30 minutes. Kaya nga, if you will notice, 15 to 20 minutes dun sa intramuscular, it stays in the blood longer. Pero yung gradual absorption, it will take time sa subcutaneous. Yung 15 to 30 minutes. Sa rectal, it will have 5 to 30 minutes. Okay? Ingestion. If we say ingestion, oral. 30 to 90 minutes. Can you imagine that? 30 to 90 minutes. One and a half hour, the maximum yung effect. So 30 minutes, it will take time pa. Minutes to, ah, it's not seconds. So, ang transdermal, yung topical, yung mga, mga it is through the skin, it may vary. It could be minutes to hours. It may not have, uh, it, may, it may vary. It may not be the same with, with the specific measure. So, uh, how about po pag in-inject ang anti-rabies? Intravenous, intravenous po ba yun? Uh, ang anti-rabies po ay binibigay intramuscular. So, kailangan natin, uh, it is given intramuscular so that uh, it stays longer in the blood to combat yung continuous uh, 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 synthesis ng, ng possible infection of the rabid virus. So, dun tayo. It's intramuscular po. Hindi siya intravenous. So, uh, lahat po ba ng vaccine ay intramuscular root? Yes. Yes po. Most, uh, most or all of the the ano po the the vaccine are given intramuscularly. Ko so ngayon may knowledge na kayo kung bakit intramuscular. Kasi it stays in the blood uh, longer. So yung 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 pagstay sa blood niya sa longer, it it facilitates to to make our immune system respond to it. Yan. So ang difference lang naman yung with subcutaneous is may mga situations na kailangan hindi pwedeng sudden, very sudden or immediate yung, yung response ng gamot simply because pwedeng mag-lead into complications. Tulad ng na-mention ko sa inyo kanina, insulin, hindi pwedeng ibigay intramuscular yan. Huwag nyo ibibigay ha. Intramuscular kasi it stays longer in the blood pero ang effect niya ay magiging shorter than subcutaneous. So pwedeng mag-grease yan ng, ng sudden drop of blood sugar. So similar with the anticoagulant, yung mga rin, ang huli, uh, ang sasapix ng mga drugs, this will cause also tracheal sa uh, what we call uh, bleeding. Okay? So now, when it comes to the perspective of the, uh, the concept pertaining to this, we may now uh, consider that we have uh, some uh, concerns with medication safety. I may invite again uh, an interactive activity to visit the Slido. There will be no uh, there, there will be no wrong answers here, but you may have multiple answers. Pero you may choose one then, which you think alin po on this one, two, three, and four, ang most common concern that will really lead to medication safety sa patient. Is it number one, uh, overdosage or underdosage? Is it number two, it's the non-reporting, you will not, the nurse or the, the health personnel will not report the adverse reactions? Number three, is it overload of patient assignments, meaning uh, the nurse may not focus basically on the, on the, on the safety of, uh, safe administration of drug because the, the, the nurse is overload. Uh, the other one is uh, non-compliance with prescribed medication, meaning uh, the nurse uh, did not follow the standards of the administration of drug. There are no wrong answers here, but you, you continue to, to answer and respond. Okay, most, so based from the ranking that we have, overdoses and underdosage uh, reaching the top of common medication safety issues. Uh, Non-reporting of adverse reactions. Non-reporting of adverse reactions. So the second now is overload of patient assignments. And fourth, we have non-compliance with prescribed medication. So probably I may ask, uh, I may ask while you are having your responses, uh, I may ask someone or in our class of their answers. So there will be no wrong answers here. So may I call on uh, Ms. Era. Ms. Era, are you still here? Ms. Era yes, Tegarido. Yes. Uh, ano yung naging response mo sa, sa four that we have enumerated that will really risk for medication safety? 
I think po sir overdosage. Yeah, wow. Can um, you share? Um, okay, may experience po kami at home. Uh-huh. Um, nag uh, tawag ito, nag meron pong needed na gamot yung parents ko. Eh hindi po sila Ayaw po nilang laging nagpapa-check up. So, yeah. once lang po sila nagpa-check up. Then, itong gamot uh, is for uh, a month of taking lang po ata. Tapos, kailangan mo mag-follow up sa doktor mm, kung need okay. mo pa i-take ulit. Uh-oh. So, ayaw po nilang magpa-check up ulit. So, nag-take lang po sila ulit ng gamot not knowing if dapat po, po sila ulit mag-take. So, mm. uh, possible po nag-overdosage sila, di ba po, uh, Dean? Mm. So, yun po. I think yun po yung problem. Oh, are are there are there any observations which you think na nag-overdose sila? Any 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 complaints that your parents have na ah they feel nag-overdose ako? Ah uh, wala naman po to my knowledge, wala naman po akong napansin. Pero I think po dapat talaga nag-continue sila with the check up. Ah okay. So that could be the risk kasi no na na there are some drugs that may not continue. And and basically, there are some drugs that must be discontinued because uh, with a certain condition, that's why every time that they will have consultations, it is usually supported by diagnostic exams. So the results of diagnostic exams will be the reference of the doctor if the drug will be discontinued or continued. Okay, thank you very yes, much. Po. Thank you, Paul. How about, can I... Uh, may I know the, the response of... How about Mr. Escobar? Mr. Escobar. Yes po din. Apo, what is your response on this score? <laughs> Yung overload of the patient assignment score. Oh, what din. about? What about with the overload? Can you share it? Um, napansin ko lang po um, din sa mga public hospital natin, lalo na sa, um, sa mga community natin, is patuloy, na pa, patuloy pa rin po na tumataas yung percentage ng mga patient. Although may mga severe and mga light na cases, bali, dumadag pa rin po sila sa record ng mga hospital. Yeah. So, so do you think, uh, Mr. Escobar, na yung, yung overload of patient assignments, the nurse could be high risk of to be, could be high risk to commit medication errors because of uh, the problem with focus and stressful working environment? Um, hindi po, sir. I think po, um, nasa um, patient na po yun, kaya po sila nagkakasakit. Ah, okay. Dahil siguro sa amin. Opo. So, if we are referring to medication errors, do you think yung isa sa mga pwedeng mag-risk uh, for medication safety is yung sobrang dami ng patient assignment ng nurse? Do you think it could, it could lead to that problem with medication safety? Possible, sir. Ay, possible yeah. po din pag madami pong pasyente, bali, hindi po na-handle Ah, uh, hindi po siya na hand oh, po, pag kulang po yung nurses ng isang hospital. Yeah. Kasi uh, thank you so much Mr. Escobar. So just to support your response. Um yun yung yun yung sinusuport natin when it comes to the talagang ratio. Kasi can you, for example, uh, a nurse is handling a critical patient, 10 critical patients and there are medications that must be given on time. So and it may need also uh, a re, uh it may need also um, uh, monitoring and vital signs uh recording. So I think I think the the overload of patients could be a medication safety if the nurse cannot anymore fulfill yung assessment and identification of adverse reactions and if the patient cannot uh, rather the nurse cannot anymore identify yung mga risk of the situations na Uh, kung ang pasyente natin ay nagre-reach na so toxic effect of drugs but still we we Filipino nurses are are on the on the perspective na we prioritize safety pa din but there are some situations na pwedeng mag-risk thank you so much Mr. Escobar how about Mr. Kelvin Kelvin that bonton yes po din uh uh Kelvin what is your answer here Uh, overdose or underdose po ata. Yes. Okay. So tingnan natin doon naman sa ano, kan a while ago it was responded yung sa overdosage. What about with the underdosage naman? Siguro sir yung, yung sa underdosage po siguro parang it will take time po to effect the ano the medication sir. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Kasi that's underdosage po. Parang hindi po, po magpo-fully effect yung medicine na nabigay doon sa patients pag underdosage lang po siya. Mm-hmm. Pag, it for like, If for example, Kelvin, there are some situations in the public hospitals or in the government institutions na there is no sufficient supply of drugs. 
So for example, you are managing two patients. Um, you need to, to give each, because of fever, you need to give 500 milligrams of uh, paracetamol. But due to the insufficient uh, uh, stock of drug, will it be sound, a sound decision to, to uh, break into half na lang na 250 milligrams yung ibigay ko sa isang patient at 250 milligrams yung ibigay ko with the other patient, but at least they have received the drug? Will that be a sound decision? Do you, how, what do you think? As uh, pag ako po, uh, I will ask pa rin po the, ano, the doctor first po. Mm -hmm. Kasi hindi naman po ako pwedeng mag agad magbigay ng isang medication, ng medicine sa isang patients po nang walang doctor's order. So kung ganun po may shortage of ano, medication po, ano, I still need the permission of doctor po kung right pa rin po ba ibigay yung uh, the 250 milligram na medicine to patients po. Yeah. So from that perspective, the, the clinical decision is under dosage na yon, di ba? So kung yes. for example, uh, 500 milligrams is the supposed dose, tapos we put it into half just to benefit yung other patient, uh, I think it may not, it may cause uh, a problem with that kasi under dosage. It may not reach yung it may not reach yung point that uh, the right dose will manage yung uh, problem natin with fever because uh, it's under dosage. So just similar also with pediatric clients, if we will give the if we will give the the dose which may not reach its prescribed uh, dosage, then the under dosage itself may not meet its uh, common objective for the treatment of the client. So thank you very much. Uh, Last one, siguro, before we, ano, uh, we have, how about, can I ask Aliana? Miss Aliana Joy? Aliana Joy, you're still with us? Okay, so baka may connectivity problem. How about Miss Degia, Julian? Miss Julian? Julian? Yes, good evening, good evening. Yes, po. what is your answer here? Overdosage and underdosage po. Yeah, so can you share it? Can you share it with us why you have chosen the uh, overdoses or underdosage as as uh, a medication safety issue? Ang napapasin ko lang din po kasi usually sa, sa amin po dito sa bahay, mm -hmm. underdosage, like for example, kapag nakalimutan or hindi nila maalala na uminom na ba sila ng gamot or what, mm -hmm. parang tatama rin na rin sila uminom. Tapos next hour na lang din sila iinom. Parang ganun po. Ah, okay. So, actually, ano yan eh. That's, that's correct. Hindi lang mismo yung dose. If, kung hindi na pa-follow yung time at there's no continuity, under dosage yon. Correct. Correct analysis. That's why there's some situation for Filipino mentality, di ba? That when we are giving or administering drug, if they feel well na and they, they are experiencing fever, they will continue, discontinue the drug already. And, and when it comes to the action of the antimicrobial, it must reach the point of the, the number of days as prescribed because it will, that's, that's the, the, the scientific evidence that will, will inhibit the growth of microorganism. Pero tayo, because of the financial constraints, it means it, it, supposedly it must not be the reason. So thank you very much, uh, Gillian. So on this perspective, we have, uh, I have only five minutes now. So we will not anymore proceed up to 9 o'clock. As, as, as promised, I, it's only 8 o'clock supposedly. But when it comes to the four stages of drug movement, uh, the degree and rate of drug absorption may depend on these following concepts. Diffusion. So if you go back to the biochemistry, we have the what we call diffusion is defined from higher concentration to lower concentration. Just like uh, I, may, I may emphasize here, the, the diffusion when it comes to the perspective of absorption. Diba, for example, a highly concentrated drug is being given to the oral, or rather, intravenous rather, intravenous, and once it reaches the, the plasma, that's the point that it will gear towards yung pag-distribute at bumababa na from higher to lower concentration na siya. Kasi once the drug is being distributed and reach the plasma, the, the, the concept and principle itself is bumababa na yung concentration. So kung bumababa na or it causes the decrease in the concentration of the drug, it must continue yung right, yung administration of the drug on the indicated time so that to support yung continuity of the drug. So that's referring to diffusion. The other is referring to the active transport. So pag sinabi naman nating active transport, 
this is this is dependent on how uh, how the drug will take uh, will take place kasi pag sinabi natin naman na na ano ba ang tinatawag nating pinocytosis kasi pag sinabi nating uh, pinocytosis this will consider po on yung perspective how the drug will take act or will act on the response ng response ng cell so kasi pag sinabi natin din na na pinocytosis as an active active transport this will this will consider din po kasi as one of the mechanism of absorption na once uh, ito ay ma-ingest sa sa liquid ng cell or sa cell membrane it will it will pass through the distribution towards compartment so yun yung point of why this pinocytosis is also important when it comes to drug absorption because this will be the action already of the drug of the drug through the cell membrane so eventually when it comes to when it comes to the distribution of the drug uh, this will be the last uh, topic that i will introduce to you the audiovisual presentation related to the what we call uh, distribution okay so let us continue Hi, in this tutorial, I'm going to talk about the distribution of drugs within body compartments. In the previous tutorial, I said that this video would be on the metabolism of drugs, but I've decided that it's probably best to talk about the distribution of drugs before we move on to metabolism. For the purposes of distribution, we can consider that the body is made up of four major compartments, which are really collections of fluid, and numerous minor compartments. These major compartments are the blood, or strictly speaking, the plasma, fat, extracellular fluid, and intracellular fluid. Then there are numerous other minor compartments. These include the cerebral spinal fluid, the peritoneum, synovial fluid in joints, Okay, so the distribution starts when when the the drug reaches the plasma, di ba that will end yung absorption sa systemic circulation. So once it will reach the plasma, that's the time that it will proceed to the different compartments. So usually, pag ang drug is uh, lipid-soluble or fat-soluble drug, papasok yan sa compartment ng fat. Okay, dun sa, we have sa cells, there are two compartments of cells. We have intracellular at extracellular fluid. Kaya ang fluid, katulad ng binanggit ko kanina sa pinocytosis, yung it's very important for the fluid of the cells, sa cell membrane, to carry this drug. So dito sa distribution, yung concept mismo ng pinocytosis ay, 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 will definitely apply kasi yung extracellular fluid itself at intracellular fluid itself will be the means to distribute the blood. The other way, uh, the other way around is that of there are other uh, fluids that is present into the body, which is present also in the various organs, that will help when it comes to the distribution of drug. So, so if we have the plasma, extracellular fluids. In the extracellular fluid, take note of this: that the highest electrolyte, uh, positive electrolyte for extracellular fluid is sodium. The highest negative. Uh, negatively charged uh, electrolyte in the extracellular fluid is chloride. Kaya most of the intravenous fluids preparation po natin ay may sodium and chloride. For the intracellular fluid po, uh, sa compartment natin, ang highest electrolyte po ay positively charged potassium and the other one is phosphate, yung negatively charged electrolytes. So that's why these electrolytes are very important to, to act upon when it comes to the metabolism and when it comes to electrical impulse to distribute it. So, yung mga other fluids, just like cerebrospinal fluid, these are the fluids that may act on the cerebral function sa brain. Peritoneum, uh, peritoneum rather, peritoneal uh, cavity or peritoneal fluid where abdominal organs are protected. So, yung peritoneal fluid itself is the one that may that may distribute the, the, the drug. Synovial, this is referring to the joints. Okay, ano pa? Uh, other fluid pa. Amniotic. 
amniotic fluid for the pregnant mothers. Uh, the amniotic fluid is very important to distribute naman the, the, the drug to the fetal circulation and if there are indications of uh, drug that uh, will uh, facilitate the monitoring of the fetal well-being. Another na may mga fluid. Sa lungs, may fluid, di ba? Plural fluid. So yung fluid na yon ay can be used for distribution. Another, sa heart, pericardial fluid. So fluid that is present in the pericardium. So any any of these fluid are 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 part of the distribution of the drug. Let's continue. And the fetus in pregnancy. There are numerous others, but for the purposes of this tutorial, we'll consider these as one single compartment. So if a drug is placed into one of the compartments, we can see how it might move and distribute into other compartments. Often drugs are placed into the blood. These are drugs which are given intravenously. So when a drug is placed into a compartment, it often associates with binding molecules. These binding molecules are often proteins such as albumin. Yeah. So it's 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 it it must be with our knowledge na yung bonding molecules mismo such as the albumin is very important so that it will facilitate yung distribution to the different compartments. So the protein binding na na, na kinoconsider natin is the albumin. Okay, next. This process sequesters the drug within the compartment, effectively increasing that compartment storage capacity. And there is an equilibrium maintained between the bound drug and the unbound drug. The unbound drug within a compartment is then able to move into a new compartment, and thus an equilibrium is maintained between adjacent compartments. When a drug moves into a new compartment, some of that drug is sequestered by binding molecules within that new compartment. This process continues until there is a balance between each compartment and a balance between the amount of free drug versus bound drug within each compartment. The balance between each compartment is determined by a number of factors, and this is best represented using an equilibrium constant. So we may not anymore consider this uh, explanation of when it comes to the equilibrium constant. What matters most is that of we have the 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 binding protein, which is the albumin in every compartment, so that it will indicate the proper distribution of the drug. Thus, uh, with this situation, there are considerations that we really need to consider po of what will really affect distribution. Usually, so permeability of barriers. What do you mean by permeability of barriers? For example, we have a problem with the blood. The patient is anemic. You administer the drug intravenously. Will, will it allow, will it cause a sufficient albumin to bind the drug? No. So kung for example naman, uh, situations na high ang alcohol level sa blood, that may not also uh, facilitate the binding of the albumin kasi pwedeng mag-cause yan ng uh, problem with the delayed distribution or through the albumin of the protein binding. So that will also cause yung uh, pH or yung concentration po ng mga compartments. Kung ang mga compartments po ninyo or blood ninyo po ay highly acidic or highly alkanilic, this will affect also distribution of blood. So, yung binding capacity that we're talking about is kung for example, uh, low level of albumin, yung low level of albumin may affect the binding of the drug. So, basically, in this situation, we will not anymore consider po itong formula na to, but, but in, the, in this situation, hoping you understand that once it will be distributed, it's with a the compartment. These are the basic principles that we need to understand. Okay, so I think uh, I'm too much with the time that I had. Supposedly, the, our synchronous session is up to 8 o'clock, but I really appreciate your cooperation with, with me when it comes to the continuous and active participation. So I'll just stop the recording.